Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for December 9th, 2022. Well, yesterday, those bulls did a pretty good job in defending those support levels, holding the markets up, although it didn't really make a change to the overall pattern. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can gain some information about how we may want to approach the market for today. Well, as I mentioned yesterday, it was really going to be a critical hold to hold these support levels in the chart. And as you can see, we have held in here and done a pretty darn good job of holding those support levels. Yet we really didn't change a whole lot. We are calming down in the price action moves. Although yesterday at one point in time, we were up about 300 points, um, pulling back to just rest um, than the rest of the day. And if you remember in the morning prep video yesterday, I suggested that there might be a little bit of inspiration um, in the morning and then just kind of die on the vine and become a little bit light and choppy. Um, heading into the afternoon um, and that's really kind of what we got but it was a little bit better um, to um, to have held this um, to be holding these levels in here in anticipation of some of the data moving forward so let's take a look if if those bulls continue to find inspiration you can see in the pre-market we're trying to pump it up here a bit in the pre-market get a few things going here but as you uh, can see if we look right in here we have price resistance that we're going to have to deal with first off this is the first level right over through here that we're going to have to deal with in the chart if we're going to get bullish um, in the market and then of course if we can push through that level then we've got this level up here and, and and by the way that's a pretty substantial move i'm going to go to the dow just to measure that out for you here but if we were opening right in here someplace if we were to push all the way up into here that's an 835 point move so it's going to be a big stretch if we're going to move up to there and considering the fact that we next week have an fomc meeting um, might be a little bit too far of a reach to do all at once. You never know um, with the emotion of this market right now, but there is a concern here. So watch that carefully. Now, if we were to take a look, um, if those bears were to find inspiration, for example, if, if the numbers today um, are not that favorable, then I would suggest we look for areas down in here. First off, this level right here, and then if that does not hold, you can see we've got a good support level in there. And if that doesn't hold, probably a push down into this area of the chart. So just keep a close eye on it. Now, what we have to uh, recognize here is that our upside trend, um, we've kind of lost that upside trend um, in this uh, choppy, windy consolidation um, thing. It's been a very wide range of emotional moves um, in the market. And a lot of that's due to the fact that there's tremendous hope and tremendous hype still that we're going to get that Santa Claus rally. Now, I can tell you over the years of my trading, which 30 years uh, plus now um, in trading, is some years we get a Santa Claus rally, some years we don't. And so keep that in mind. We may have, and we have to take it into context of the fact that the um, the diamonds here, for example, from low to high, we rallied without a major test or pullback in the chart. We rallied 20%. So maybe, maybe 
Santa Claus rally has occurred. Um, that's something to be considering, considering the debt and the situations that the consumer are feeling and the potential of the recession of next, next year, we may have already kind of overshot that expectation. I'm not saying that's the case, but it is something to be considered that maybe it doesn't show up. Now, if it does, if it does show up, then we're going to have to test these resistance levels in the chart to break through. And um, we'll want to keep in mind that the Dow so far is the only index, 30 companies in the Dow, the only index who has defeated the um, overall big downtrend. And so if we take a look at our SPY, SPY, you can see here in the chart that we still have not defeated that overall downtrend. Still struggling with that area here to break out of that chart. Now, we certainly have had an upside trend, but here again, that upside trend has kind of uh, gone by the wayside here in the chart with this longer consolidation and that rejection of that resistance high up here. So the good news is yesterday we had a, a nice bullish hold of this critical area, and it's really pretty critical here in the SPY. As you can see, we held this area in here, and that's a good sign for the bulls. If those bulls can remain um, or find inspiration today, then we'll look for a retest of some resistance right in here. Notice these little tops right here um, providing a little bit of resistance. And if we can push through that level, then we would look to this downtrend resistance and price resistance in the chart. So we've got a little bit of that double level um, that we'd have to breach. So we're going to need some pretty good information, I think, to breach that level, considering the fact that we've got an FOMC meeting next week, a CPI reading next week, um, could have a little bit of struggle um, on a Friday pushing that high in the market. But if they do, we know where those levels are. Now, if we take a look and if we f happen to get some information today that's not so bullish and those bears are inspired, well, once again, we're gonna watch this level right in here. If we can hold that for support, I think we're in pretty good shape. If we fail that level, I want you to notice that failing this level, level could be pretty fatal um, for the SPY. Um, dropping down through here would kind of suggest we're going to start moving back toward um, those lows of the year. We do have some support levels down in here, but that would be a pretty big stretch to drop into. So just keep an eye on that. It's pretty critical that we hold that level um, and the bulls defend that. If we look at our QQQ here in the charts, um, this is also very, very critical that we hold this price support because you can see we tested it really hard um, just a couple of days ago and um, we bounced it yesterday, bouncing back up off of here. Now, one of the things that's helping the NASDAQ here probably more than anything else is the reopening of China. Um, they're relaxing some of those uh, lockdown restrictions and easing some of those pressures. So that's helping the NASDAQ here a bit. We'll want to keep an eye on that. And overnight, um, China had um, some of their um, inflation numbers, their actual, their CPI went up by 1.6%, but their PPI reduced by 1.3%. So they had kind of a mix of data there uh, moving things up, but um, overall markets are feeling a little bit of relief um, because of the lockdowns um, starting to ease over there. So keep an eye on that. Even European markets are a little bit higher this morning just based off of that news. So we'll want to watch that pretty closely here and that could inspire um, uh, QQQ a little higher. Another thing that may help just a little bit, Apple has been struggling and I've mentioned this, um, um, probably our more notable um, earnings report from yesterday was AVGO, AVGO um, substantial supplier to Apple. And apparently they are doing pretty well. So uh, moving up in the pre-market after uh, their um, earnings report after the bell yesterday. So that should provide a little bit of help to um, this struggling Apple stock in here with lots of 
um, lots of unfortunate data coming from China and the struggle that they're having in producing products and moving a lot of their manufacturing out of the country. So we'll want to keep an eye on that. Now, as we look at that QQQ, we're getting those little bit of help, um, you know, from that China news and, and um, Broadcom doing what they're doing. Um, so you can see we're trying to push up here in the pre-market. So if we can find that bullishness in the data today, um, we might look for a retest of some of these levels up in here. Notice we've got fairly significant resistance levels in the chart here um, to be watching. And if we can push through that area, then maybe we push right on up here and test this level in the chart. But unfortunately, testing that level doesn't resolve too much of, of anything because we still have that major downtrend that we need to breach. And with worries of um, next year's um, recession, all the talk out there about that, um, um, and a uh, Federal Reserve meeting next week, it may be just a little bit tough for us to push right up into there, um, you know, on Friday. We'll have to see. Watch that close. Now, our um, bears, um, if the bears are inspired, you can see this is going to be a pretty critical level. If the bears get inspired and we push back down, we need to hold that support level in the chart because if we don't, well, as you can see, we've got a pretty easy path then to retest the lows of the year. We might catch some support in a couple of these areas in here, but um, it, it doesn't look good if we lose those levels. Now, our IWM, our IWM is going to be kind of interesting because IWM already had a double top rejection here of that longer term downtrend. And although I, we talked about this level in here, pretty critical that we hold hold and we didn't do that we broke down through um, although we had uh, that bullish action in here yesterday pushing us up you can see it really didn't leave behind a very confident um, uh, candle pattern here in the chart so if we're going to be bullish one of the first things we need to do here in IWM is recover that area hold it as support and then see if we can attack these levels up here. Now what we've seen in this emotional market is we don't do those um, um, holding patterns. Um, what we do is it's just all or nothing. We either race in or we're running for the door. So possibly we can push straight on up here and if that is the case then we'll look for this resistance right in here first off in the chart. Um, if we can uh, break through that support level that we just broke yesterday or the day before yesterday and then if we can push right on through that then we'll retest this double top high and see if we can break through that overall downtrend if the bears happen to find inspiration then I would look for a retest of our low just the other day look for a retest of that and if that were to fail then we're going to look down into areas like this for that next level of price support. So pretty critical situations going on here in the market that we're going to have to pay close attention to. If we take a look at our VIX, our VIX eased that pressure just a little bit yesterday with that move back up. But one of the things we have to recognize and acknowledge is that we broke that downtrend here in the chart and we did break back through a little bit of price resistance here. But no harm, no foul here. This isn't enough of a break to really um, raise major concern unless we were to hold this downtrend break with a higher low. That's where the concern will come in. So today's data is going to be pretty critical as to which way this goes. Will we, will we push this back down or will we start pressing this back up as we kind of worry about um, what the FOMC is going to do next week in that pending recession for next year. If we take a look at our T21 22. Well, T2122 leaves a little bit of confusion here in um, the market because we tried to get um, quite a bit of bullish going, bullishness going early in the day and we pushed up near this 50% area here in T2122 and then those bears came back in and pushed back down. We kind of wandered in the afternoon. So looking at T2122, what we have here is um, an opportunity if the bulls can find that inspiration 
operation here or maintain this pre-market pump up, we certainly have upside opportunity in the chart if we can find find that bullish inspiration. We will want to keep in mind though that we've also opened up a bigger opportunity to move to the downside. We've relieved some of that pressure on that downside move, meaning that we still have a pretty substantial move to the downside if the the bears find inspiration today and i gotta tell you i can't tell you which which is going to occur there's a lot of hope there's a lot of anticipation of santa claus rally there's a lot of hope that we're really going to see those ppi numbers declining but i gotta tell you i'm not sure that's going to be the case um, with the way the data has been coming out so watch that carefully now if we take a look at our t2108 now our t2108 gives us a little bit of hope and i still have to give this to the bulls the bulls are holding in here pretty well so right now i don't see any fear or panic in coming in uh, to the market here at all. We're holding on to some, some good support levels here. Notice what we tried to turn up just a little tiny bit at the end of the day yesterday. We've got about 60% of our stocks holding above our 40 day moving average. And there's no way you can look at that and say, that's um, very bearish. Um, we're holding in here nice. And if we take a look at our T2107, same thing is true. Holding in here very well. In fact, really strong. This is the percentage of stocks above the 200 day. We're holding in here nice. We're holding above price support levels. So you have to give that to the bulls. They're not giving up here on uh, these charts. The pullback has largely been because we were we just took it too far, um, too fast, and we needed a rest or a consolidation or a pullback in those um, index charts um, because we kind of stretched it a little bit too far there. So um, if we take a look at our T2101, which is our momentum indicator for the market, well, I gotta tell you guys, I'm gonna jump right back to the diamonds because it's really not showing us anything. Um, as a matter of fact, um, we continue to to kind of produce very low volume here in the market is we're just doing kind of that wait and see a lot of wandering around um, waiting uh, for data and unfortunately we could get a big move today on our PPI data and then still wander around a bit um, because you know, next week, CPI and, and the FOMC meeting. So um, low volume um, in these um, index charts on the day and uh, not getting the best of data here for that momentum indicator. So let's take a look at um, our economic calendar for today. Now our economic calendar has just got a couple of things on it that we have to be thinking about. First off, we've got PPI that's going to be out before the bell and it is going to be the biggest market mover now the interesting thing about the consensus here on the ppi is kind of a mix of data they're suggesting that um, we may have some month over month month numbers that actually increased um, x food and energy and things like that or stayed flat while we're seeing year over year numbers showing a decline so we'll want to watch that closely um, uh, that will be the mover or the inspiration, I think, for this morning. Now, following that at 10 p.m., we're going to have the consumer sentiment number. Consumer sentiment right now is expected by the consensus to remain flat. So uh, no real change in that sentiment, um, according to the consensus. So I don't know how uh, the market will react to that. Um, it may just add to the ugliness if this is a bad number on PPI or add to the um, um, celebration if this is a good number on the PPI. So watch that close. Now keep in mind, after that morning data, there's not much else to respond to here in the market. And then we could go back into that worry mode pretty easily about what comes next with um, the CPI, the FOMC next week, and then of course the worry of um, um, recession um, heading into next year with all those warnings from the major banks and, and um, top CEOs out there. So we'll want to watch that close. Now on the um, 
um, earnings side, we've got a light day. Not much happening here on the earnings side. Yesterday, we did get a couple, um, um, you know, uh, opposing things we had um, Costco report and you know they you know just kind of didn't get much reaction here in Costco um, but we did have that Broadcom report that moved pretty nicely and that's bullish particularly I think for the NASDAQ um, then we had stocks like um, DOCU DOCU nice pop here right into its downtrend resistance but a positive move and on the other hand, we had Lululemon go the other direction. So kind of a mix of data. Today, we only have two verified reports. Um, J-O-U-T will be reporting. Now, this is a nice bullish pattern here in the chart. And the only other one is L-I. And L-I looks like we got a little bit of back and forth going on here in the pre-market on that one. So trying to break that downtrend here. So that is it for inspiration on the earnings calendar. And next week, um, our earnings calendar is also quite light. Um, we're kind of running, scraping the bottom of the barrel on those earnings reports um, for the rest of this year. So let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could please do me that favor, click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment that helps the channel to continue to grow. And I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who does take the time to do that. I truly, truly appreciate it. And I know it's kind of monotonous day every, every single day doing that. Um, but thank you to everyone who does take the time, um, um, to support the, you know, the effort that it takes to put these videos out daily. I do appreciate it. Um, let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up and please keep in mind guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, you're going to need to do your own due diligence. You're going to have to be very, very careful in this market because it's going to be very data driven here today, um, particularly this morning, um, how the market is going to react. So we could get a big gap up, big gap down. I wouldn't be surprised if we whipsaw um, after the morning open here um, with all all the emotion that could spill out um, on the market and then uh, we could easily kind of drift into more of a uh, a dead afternoon waiting for what a uh, Jerome Powell is going to do next week so let's take a look at a few of these um, charts first off I've been seeing quite a move here I think there may be a little bit of a rotation beginning to happen into defensive sector stocks I mentioned this yesterday um, um, in the morning prep and it really seemed to be true um, yesterday um, as I was looking through charts a lot of defensive sector stocks showing signs that there may be a move into these areas for a little bit of protection everyone's kind of planning maybe into next year so KHC looking very good just a simple old food stock boring as all get out good dividend payer but holding up well if you take a look at like Colgate Palmolive it's been moving back up albeit there's a lot of resistance in here that was a nice bullish move yesterday holding on to that trend here um, in Colgate um, seeing stocks like Hershey um, Hershey really zooming up yesterday breaking through some resistance all-time highs here in Hershey um, another good strong dividend payer paying off here in the market how about Altria um, um, old boring company good divvy payer as you can see looking very very bullish breaking through resistance and showing positive patterns in the charts so we're seeing an awful lot of those defensive sector kind of old stodgy boring companies doing very good we could also see that same kind of sentiment happening in some dividend payers like 
utilities. Take a look at how pretty this upside trend here is in utilities and that chance that utilities may be starting to set for that next move higher. You might want to look at some of those utility companies or look into XLU. You could also see a little bit of that same kind of sentiment looking for a little bit of safety and dividend yield. Um, if you take a look at AT&T, AT&T hanging in there, tried to pop early in the day and pulled back but you can see holding in here very solidly and strong over a nice little resting period here in the chart. So some of those high divvy payers starting to show some pretty good signs of surprise support and may, we may be seeing a little bit of that sneak from the institutions over into those defensive sector stocks to weather, weather the recessionary storm for next year. So watch that. And then let's take a look at a few other places here. As you guys re, um, know, I've been talking a lot about this dollar and the dollar weakening here um, moving forward. Now, what may occur and what we might be seeing here is the reopening or the re reduction of restrictions in China um, for lockdowns may actually improve the yuan. If the yuan starts to strengthen, that should weaken the dollar even more here. So let's watch that closely. We have some price support in here, and if the dollar continues to weaken, then that would possibly move the market higher, help the market move higher, because um, we would um, see those prices starting to come down in um, some bonds and things like that. So watch the that closely but having said that that's also inspiring some pretty good moves here in um, gold and silver gold continues to look very good and continuing to stretch on up here this morning gold's looking good silver looking good stretching up pretty solidly here this morning on that weakening of the dollar so keep an eye on some of those precious metals I've been mentioning these I'm um, setting up um, looking really really good here um, on the morning but that can change really fast um, bef you know depending on how we react to the data this morning so quite a few of things in in that area you might also want to be taking a look into other commodity prices like steel US steel breaking through resistance we're trying to hold this area in here as price support I would be watching those to see if we can get that next move to the upside if we can react positively to this and pump on through to the upside. So look at steel, look at copper, um, FCX, things like that. Look at um, uh, miners, uh, GDX, um, whoops, uh, GDX um, and ETF. Um, nice bullish pattern. Got a little resistance here that we have to be concerned about, but um, showing nice bullish patterns. And if gold and silver are going to be moving up, I would look to those miners to also be very bullish. So with that guys, hey, I run this video really long and the reason I did is there is no blog today. So I had the time to do it. I want to wish you all a very, very positive day, a bullish day, um, and probably more importantly, a wonderful restful weekend coming up. Be safe out there guys. I wish you great success and we'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning.